Welcome back once again to Jack's Tech Corner and another Photoshop Elements 13 video tutorial. Although this Photoshop Elements tutorial I'm going to teach you today will work in pretty much all the versions 9, 10, 11, 12, and of course 13. Today, as you can plainly see here on your screen, we're going to be creating a, a um, Christmas card. Now, I know you can go out and buy Christmas cards, right? We can buy a whole box of them, but isn't it better to create a Christmas card with that personal touch. And that's what we're going to do here. We're going to do it with Photoshop Elements. So we're going to go back and revert this back to pretty much nothing, and we're going to start over. But this is our final product. So how did we get here? Now, don't run away thinking, oh, Jackson used a Create menu and used Create Christmas card or greeting cards. That's okay. But we want to be a little bit more um, creative and use our own creative style. So we're going to do this from scratch. So I'm going to go up here first of all, and I'm going to uh, edit, and we're going to actually just go to, well, we were going to go to edit. Here's what I'm going to do. I'm just going to close this Christmas card out, and we're not going to save it. We're going to start from scratch. The first thing you need to do is start your base card. Now, what I mean by that is we have to create a blank file. So we're going to go to the file, the pull down menu, go to blank file. Once you're in black blank file under the name, just type card. And under your settings here, you can go to presets, it's going to be custom settings. And we're going to go to width and height. And we're going to set these to inches. So most of the times it's set to pixels. We're going to set these to inches. We want the width to be seven inches and the height to be five inches. So these are nice because if you're going to get these developed, you can get them developed on a straight five by seven picture and you'll have your card ready to go. You can make it any size you want to, but this is just the size I find to be the, the kind of the best for a greeting card. Under our background contents, normally it will be set to white. We're going to set this to transparent. Now in transparent mode, we're going to go ahead and we're just going to simply click OK. What this does, it gives us the size card here that we can start working on. Now on the Mac here, I'm going to use the Alt key or on your PC, you can use Alt and use your scroll wheel on your mouse and make this just a little bit smaller just so we can work on it. And if you don't do that step, don't worry about it. I just like to have my card kind of centered. I'm going to click over in my Layers palette and do a Command or Control J and duplicate that. So we're working with a new blank layer on top of our background layer. What we need to do now is bring out that creative side of you. And how you're going to do that is very simply we are going to look for a background image. You're going to do this simply by going to Google and do a Google search for Christmas pictures or, you know, holiday pictures if you're making a different card. And we're going to go to images. And then under images, click on the search tools on the right. We want to do that because you want to find the largest scale image. I found that this doesn't work too well by using uh, smaller size images or medium. It works with large size images because we're going to be stretching this thing a little bit. Let me click back up there. We're going to be stretching this thing out a little bit. So we want to find the best possible image size that we can get. Then we're going to go down through here and you're going to find a card, something to use for your Christmas card. We'll pick something different. So you know that this is kind of a, a fresh edit here and we'll just uh, look and see what will fit. I tried to find something with the center of the card kind of cut out so I can put my text and everything around it. And I'm just going to use this picture over here. Once you bring up the picture on your screen, just simply right click on it and go to save image as. Click on save image as. And you might be seeing that I'm working on a Mac, but this is the same on a PC. Under your pictures folder, so go to your pictures folder, wherever that is on your computer. And I want you to create a folder called cardstock. Because you might want to use these backgrounds another time. It's nice just to kind of create a little collection of these uh, cards or these graphics you're going to use. So then we have Christmas tree graphic. Just simply click on save. And that's going to save it into that folder for us for cardstock. Now that we're done with the Google images, we're going to just simply uh, close this box up here and minimize this. Now you're back into your Photoshop elements. Again, we're in the full editor. You see on the top of our tabs here, we are on the expert mode. 
Now what we're going to do is go to File and Place because we have to place that picture that we just picked up. You can put it in your organizer, but you don't have to. I find it just easier to work right out of the folder itself. Click on Place. And now look at these pictures, and you will find the one that we just pulled down. And it's this one here with this tree. What I'm going to do now is simply click on Place. And it's going to place it right onto our layer instead of making another separate layer. That's why it's really nice to do it this way is to place it. Once you have it placed onto your background, all we have to do now is grab the top here. And what I mean by top, there's little handles all the way around this picture. And I like to grab it from the corner. And we're going to pull up on this and grab it to the top of our, of our layer. A little bit higher there. And then we're going to grab the bottom here. And we're going to pull this down a little bit. Once you get it placed where you want it, and it's covering that background layer. Matter of fact, I'm going to pull this over just a little bit. There's a little bit of white show in there. Then we just simply click the checkbox. Now that the checkbox is selected, what we want to do now is start to add some text. Because it's a nice Christmas card already, right? We can mail this out, but nobody's going to know who it's from. So let's add first our first text box. And as we do this, it's going to create new layers on the right. To the top here, we just pull across. And up here, we're going to type uh, Mary. So I'm going to hit my cap locks. And there is our Mary. Now, flat text and line text is okay, but it's never too pleasing to me. I like to do more with my text. So we're going to grab this text, and I'm going to highlight it. I'm going to come down to my Tools panel at the bottom of the page. I'm going to click on the little Arch button here. It says Create Wrapped Text. Click on that. Now, in the Wrapped Text box, under Style, we're going to, type, we're going to click in Arch. You can also use upper arch and lower arch or just arch. Let's try upper arch. This is going to give us that arch, right? That upper part where it's kind of rounded. And I just think it looks nicer. The bend, we can take a little bit of the bend out of here. And we'll take about that much out. Click OK. Click your check box. And now you have to reposition this down. So let's pull it down a little bit. And we're going to pull it right over here. I'm going to put my mouse right underneath the text box. And what it's going to do, you're going to see it turns to like a little rocker. When I click my left mouse button, now I can move this thing around a little bit, rock it back and forth. I'm just going to line it so it's a little bit more straight. Straight being at least, you know, <clears throat> on the same line. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to add Christmas to the bottom. So let's go down here and make another text box. And type in Christmas. At that point, we're going to highlight Christmas. Click on that same little arch button down here, the wrap text. Now we're going to create the lower text. We created the upper, now the lower. And you'll see how it goes. It bends down. Once it bends down, pull this up a little bit. And click OK. Click the checkbox. And there. now we have that lower text right there. Again, I might want it to uh, use the mouse here, and I want to uh, oh, I'm going to pull it up a little bit so I can get to the bottom handle here. Just to, again, just to pull it around just a little bit, because that arch makes it bend just a little bit too much to the left or to the right. And we're going to put that right there. Now that we have that done, many of you go, Jack, you know I don't like to leave my text just flat. I don't like flat text because it looks kind of drab. So we're going to click on the top text button, or the top text box. You can see that layer is highlighted, the Mary. Go down on the bottom of your panel, on the Layers panel, to Effects. Click on the Effects button, and click on Styles if it's not selected. Under the pull-down menu, choose Bevels. Now what we're going to do is double-click on a bevel. You can use any one you want. I kind of prefer the scalloped edge. I'm going to double-click it. You can see now where I get a nice scalloped edge on my picture. It really looks nice. It really brings it alive. Let's go back to our layers panel. And you'll see now where there is a little FX in here for effects. If I double click at FX, come in here, and I can change my bevel. I can raise my bevel up some more, lower it down. Maybe I don't want it to be too high. 
you want it to make sure it has the effect of a rounded edge. You can change your lighting from one side to the other. A lot of people don't realize that. I'm just clicking on my mouse and just moving it around. So you can change where the light is hitting your bevel. Kind of like at the top here. We're going to do about oh, close as we can to 140, 140. There's 139. And then we're going to go ahead and we're going to give it a drop shadow. So the drop shadow here, we're just going to click on the drop shadow. Click the little box, the little check box. And our drop, drop shadow is black. Again, this just gives it a little bit more depth. Once we do that, click OK. Now, a lot of people would go and tell you, click on the second box or the second text, you know, and uh, add your FX again. But, you know, there's a shortcut to everything in Elements. So we're going to grab the top layer that we just worked on, click on the FX and hold it. Hold your Option key down and pull it down and drop it onto the other text box. Again, let's try this again. Let's move this. Let's do this again. So you hold your Alt key down or your Option key, hold it down, click on the FX, and drag it down to the second layer of your text. What that does for us is it makes both of these absolutely the same. And it just looks a lot nicer when you have the same effect and we don't have to go through there and redo everything we just did. The last thing I want to show you with the card is we're going to have to add a photo because that kind of makes it yours, right? This again is a very nice Christmas card. You can send this out and many people will enjoy it. But we're going to add a picture to kind of make it our own. Now I went ahead and I placed a picture already into our photo bin, into our organizer. And I took a picture of my dog last Christmas. So we're just going to use him in our organizer here on the bottom. I clicked on photo bin. And we're going to drag him up and just drop him right on the picture itself. What you're going to realize here is it's going to create a smart object layer. And that's fine. That's not a problem. But you can see it's a little big. It's covering over our whole effect. So let's resize it. Again, to resize the picture, just go down to the corner. Your mouse is going to turn to a double arrow start pulling into the center pulling into the center here we're just kind of pushing and pulling the picture around always go by the outer corners pulling in just like so I'm going to notice I'm going to lay it kind of under I'm going to show you that in a minute but I'm going to lay it under the word Christmas just to give the card an overall depth click on OK now, the way that happens is if your picture does not fall under, it's just simply layers. And if you've watched any of my layer videos, you'll remember that layers are just like pieces of tracing paper. You can see on top of one what's under the other. So what I mean by that, if I take this word Christmas and I pull it underneath the dog picture, it's going to put it behind it because now the dog picture is on top of my Christmas. So I'm going to pull it back above the dog and again put that layer back on top. Now let's click on the dog itself, right? On the dog picture here. We're going to go under layer, the pull down menu, and we're going to go to layer style, style settings. And in style settings now, you'll see that same stuff that we had before. There's a bevel, a stroke, a glow, and a drop shadow. What we're going to do now is we're going to add a bevel, and we'll click on the bevel itself. And you can either have an up bevel or a down bevel. I prefer a down bevel for a picture because it looks like the words are sitting up, but the picture's sitting down in the card. Again, we can change our sides as much as we want. We can make it deeper in there. And we're just going to give it just a little bevel here of a little bit of going in. Now, I'm not going to add a drop shadow this time. What we're going to add this time is some stroke color. And what I like to do with the stroke color is match the blue the best I can or the one the picture you see that I did earlier, uh, I matched the red. So we'll add some stroke, click on the color palette, click on the blue, and we're going to try to match that the best we can here. That's a little bit too purple, so that's a little bit more blue. And what you're going to do now is add some stroke color into here. And that's on the outside, so we don't want it on the outside, we want it to be on the inside. 
And we're just going to add a little bit of blue in there. And then we're going to drop the opacity down a little bit. Just to kind of blend it all together. And apply just like that. And you can see where it actually makes it more like a frame. Click OK. And click off of there. Now there's your great holiday greeting card. It's very simplistic to make this thing. Uh, it you know they turn out really really nice and then like I said you can print them off on a five by seven uh, print or we uh, at home here when we create these we use card stock and we actually print them on our own printer yeah you're going to use some ink but you're not going to make a ton of these these are for close family that know your pets or know your kids or whoever whatever picture you're putting in there the last thing I want to tell you to do is once you get all this done you go to the top layer the bottom layer select to go to the top layer hold your shift key down. And I want you to right click on there and go to merge layers. You're going to see what that does. It merges all the layers down to that one layer. The background layer that we started with, we're just going to simply right click on that. We can delete it. We don't need it any longer. And there's your holiday card. The last step that a lot of people say, Jack, you leave off that last final step. Go to file, save as. And we can put it in cardstock, but we're going to change this from a PSD. Remember, PSD is only the Photoshop extension. We want to make this a JPEG so we can take it out and have it developed, uh, you know, at your local Kinko's, your Walmart, or wherever you want to have these things uh, printed off at, and then save it. You can see the overall file is only 2.1 mega, uh, megabytes, which isn't too bad, so I'm going to leave it at full and click OK. Now I have that JPEG picture. Folks, I hope you've enjoyed this video tutorial on how to create a holiday greeting card. This can be used also for any cards, birthday cards, invitations, whatever you want to make, but you can personalize them and make them your very own. Folks, please help me out by using my Amazon link. If you go to, if you go to jackstechcorner.com, I'm sorry. If you go to jackstechcorner.com, you can simply click on the link to uh, go to Amazon and make all your purchases. So your purchases are your normal price. The show gets a little kickback uh, from Amazon for sending you there. So if you buy anything, uh, not just cameras, if you buy cleaning products, uh, utensils for your house, uh, you know, clock radios, whatever, whatever you buy from Amazon, use my link. And that definitely helps to show it. I really do appreciate that. Maybe save it in your favorites. And whenever you go to Amazon, use my link first and then go to Amazon and make your purchases. Also, if you're not on our Facebook group, please join the Facebook group. Many of you had out there. This is the Facebook group is blowing up. And we're getting a ton of people in there to show great, great uh, work. And it's really a nice place to hang out. You can find our Facebook group at Jack's Tech Corner. Don't forget to go to jtclearning.com where you can sign up for an online Photoshop Elements course. It's very inexpensive. And right now, uh, there is a special offer going on uh, for the holidays. And that is if you use JTC, or if you use, I'm sorry, Black Friday 10. Black Friday 10. We'll get you $10 off. So that's going to be over uh, tomorrow night at midnight. And, you know, that offer will no longer be there. So you might want to check that out. It's jtclearning.com. Click on the link at the top. It says Courses. And then click on Photography and take the Photoshop Elements 12 course. It's available right now for you. Go ahead and sign up for that today. Thank you so much for watching. And I'll see you back here next time with another tutorial on Jack's Tech Corner. Bye for now.